Well, they don't need it now.
making good progress here with these scans. Stealing my take? Just step away from my find. I'll let this go, but don't let it happen again. If you're lucky, you might find another one around here.
understand that. Oh, you beat me to it. Fascinating how life solves the same needs in comparable yet entirely different ways.
thought it would be.
Shoot the catalog some life forms?
Walter Staryard has single-handedly disrupted the market. He's got a vision, that's for sure. I can't believe Stroud pulled this off. I came out of curiosity, but some of these specs... Impressive. Hope you have a good stay. I'm proud to be a part of the Stroud Echo team. Right and true is so dull, though. Oh, this must be Walter's consultant friend. Please, come join us. We've been waiting for you. Hi there. Hello. It might surprise you to hear that, no, I have not. This is actually the first project I've led for Stroud Eklund. I recently graduated with a master's degree in engineering management. I'm actually kind of surprised they hired me. 
but I was at the top of my class, so maybe they didn't want to lose me to some other star yard. Anyway, I'm grateful for the chance to do good work here. It means I'm responsible for making sure our projects are carried through to completion. I'm not the one calling all the shots, per se, but I do need to ensure the people making those calls are empowered to do that within the limits the Executive set for us. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. Oh, uh, I just assumed. You know what? I'm really sorry. I should trust Walter knew what he was doing. My bad. Even so, we have plenty of designers. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Ah, right, so you mentioned. Let's move on to solving our budget issues then, shall we? We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical. And the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction. And they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs? And would something that expensive actually sell? I'd love to, seriously. It would be a huge win for us if we came in under or at that budget but none of the viable designs for this project can be made for that amount. I've already rejected that budget, so I have to go to the board regardless. And since you're now responsible for the major decisions, which budget proposal we go with falls on you. Sorry, uh, this is awkward, and I'm not quite sure what to do, so I really hope you're just messing with me. I was afraid you'd say that. Look, 
I'm the one who has to go to the board with this proposal, so before I can convince them this is going to be worth it, you're going to need to convince me. Well, I'm all ears, because it's going to take a miracle to convince them. Yeah? So you've done this before? Well, Walter did choose you for a reason. Okay, I think you made some good points. I'll go to the board with the kitchen sink proposal and get that approved. Fight for your vision, Jules. But be prepared to compromise. The universe might not be ready. Great! That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Great! Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of favor. Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but um, uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? This is wonderful to hear. I hope for all of our sakes that you are not overselling your ability. Now. I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current Starship market? fun. My idea is a little less conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship marketed towards citizen scientists. Sure, we and other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but none built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration fueled by ordinary people like you and me. I'd start with a small ship profile. It won't need much storage or passenger capacity. Then, of course, you would want an advanced grav drive to reach deep space and plenty of energy for extended flights. In order to keep costs down, it likely doesn't need expensive weapon systems or defensive measures. It won't need those where it's going. And of course, high-end scanners and other scientific equipment is a must. I guess we'll talk later.
afford a new ship. The repairs on our old ship just... Shotgun! Nice to see you, Captain. Oh, 
articulate and wealthy. Intriguing. Last question. Let Space is a lawless mess. If you could make the damn politicians fix one thing about it, what would it be? See you again. Hello. Hey, so I'm really enjoying our time together. Thought you should know. It's been a long time since I worked with someone so closely. I didn't realize how much I missed it. And you haven't stopped me from looking into this stuff with Irvin either. So, thank you. See, that's what makes you a good captain in my book. You're supportive. On that note, I do have some news about Irvin's case. So, I wanted to let you know that I heard back from my contact, and I think you'll want to hear this. They sent me a copy of some public records. It's interesting. There was a claim filed against Irvin, accusing him of damaging their investments. Looks like Irvin didn't even enter a plea. The Hephaestus Mining Corporation, and they also won the case. Some of Irvin's paychecks were seized, as well as any assets that weren't under joint ownership. Well, if it was Irvin, I do want to understand that, because I just can't believe it. Anyway, this mining corporation, Hephaestus, sued Irvin, claiming he irreparably damaged their mine. They said he killed the apex predators in the area around the mine, which led to herd creatures overeating the grasses. That caused the soils to release too many gases too fast, which caused her face to a ton of money. It looks like they considered him a no-show and ruled against him. 
So anyway, according to the court documents, there was a witness for the defense who was a no-show too. Then Hephaestus won by default. They tried to take his apartment, but because it's in my name too, they couldn't. I didn't know he bought it. Must have been a better deal than renting for the time he was there. They withdrew their testimony the morning of the trial. Said they had a sincere change of heart. Yes, they plan to stay in the same system for a while. That doesn't mean we can't do anything about it. And if nothing else, I just want to know more about what happened to Irvin. So here's what I was thinking. I can persuade my contact to keep digging a little bit more. I don't want to press our luck, so I'll just ask them to follow up on one thing. Should I tell them to investigate the company more or look into the witness instead? For that much money? <laughs> They'll do it. You know, this investigation is time-consuming, but it's also pretty cathartic. And who knows? Maybe if we solve this case, it'll mean a better future for Gagarin. But that's thinking too far ahead. Anyway, Captain, thanks for checking in with me. Business is switching to Stroud Eklund. It just makes sense. If I were Tayo, I'd be very.
heard they're making a new class of ship here. So, what do you think of my design proposal? Thanks. Let me tell you, we would not regret going with my idea. This is a chance to do something that will truly inspire future generations. Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent here by Walter to step in and take over our project? Ah, it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but... Honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah, pretty great. Well, as a senior designer, I'm trusted to work on some pretty important features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, these ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. See you around, I guess. I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. Well, how do I put this? My co-workers are, are smart people. But between you and me, they're in way over their head with this project. Uh, Jules especially. She's new at being a project lead and has insisted we design by committee so everyone's voice is heard. Admirable. But no one could agree on anything and we're running significantly behind because of it. Good. Just so long as you don't push us to make anything too nutty, I think your decisiveness will put us back on the right track. Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. Oh, let me tell you. All the creative minds around here are so concerned with designing the most innovative and fancy ships possible. They never stop to think about the kind of work it takes to do that in a reasonable time frame. Yes, we're engineers. Our job is to make the bloody impossible possible. But that doesn't mean it's easy or practical. That and there's never enough of us to go around. <sighs> Couldn't figure it out from the engineering talk? I'm an engineer, mate. It means I'm the one who's got to put together all these plans and actually make the bloody ship fly. Been doing it for going on 25 years at various star yards. <laughs> they still haven't realized this place would fall apart if not for me. And instead of letting me get to my work, they keep giving me fancy new titles and got me tied up in endless meetings like this one. Truth, and we need it. The others believe we need to think big and innovate. Reality is, we just need to do what we do better than anyone else. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fires. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it.
Our objective should be to build a huge ship with plenty of cargo room while keeping the costs low. Doesn't need fancy equipment, just the basics. Basic weapons, basic defenses, basic scanners. You get the idea. If we go with a design like that, I can focus on quality construction and the ship will practically sell itself. Wait, really? I was expecting we'd have to argue a bit more than that. <laughs> well, that's a relief. I hope you're being sincere. Because if I can convince them to go with mine, it'd save us all a lot of trouble in the end. I assume you mean the company and not the people. Because even if I didn't already think so, I'd tell you that both Walter and Issa are great. The company is still kind of young as far as Star Yards go, but it seems to be going in the right direction, despite what it may look like. I've been doing this for a while at other Star Yards, and so far, we're avoiding a lot of the mistakes some of the older corps have made. Nope, not really. I like to think I don't have the ego for it. I've got nothing to prove, and I don't rightly care to make my mark on the industry. All I want to do is build the best damn starships I can, and not get bogged down with all the excess particulars. But upper management loves the work I do, and they wouldn't let me say no to this. I guess they needed someone to keep everyone's heads out of the clouds, so here I am. I hope we didn't scare you off, huh? Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. And I'm supposed to come up with one too, but like, I don't know if it's as good or like, good at all, even. Thank you for saying that, but, like, really? I don't know. <clears throat> Whatever. Here goes. So, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not, like, super luxurious like our Adonis Pleasure Yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something Mom and Dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? Hmm, I haven't thought of all the details, but I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one, or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think it'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. I used to go off-world camping with my family when I was a kid. The other families we met always complained their ships weren't quite adequate for family vacations. They never had enough room, and the kids would always fight. I've done some market research, and like, no ship manufacturer seems to be making ships for things like this. Which means even if the demand is low, we can fill this niche and still sell a lot. Really? Wow, I am... <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad I told you about it. Well, if we end up making it, I swear I'll work up a hell of an ad campaign for it. So far I do. But, um, <clears throat> just between you and me, I feel like I'm in a little over my head. I, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. But my bosses 
really seem to like my work, so... I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm doing something right. <sighs> I still feel weird pitching ideas to people who have been at this for so much longer than I have. It's... interesting. <laughs> I'm new, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous and people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. Yeah, I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for chunks before this, but it was really more of an internship. <laughs> Ships are like totally different than that. I applied for the job here on a whim because I thought it'd be fun. I never expected to be hired. Um, take care, okay? <laughs> this is going great. Just fantastic. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. My hope is that he sees the passion in our work. In truth, I know he values me, but he has yet to truly cut me loose from the corporate reins and let me do as I wish. But I understand Walter has given you much greater control of our project. Perhaps I can learn from you and convince him I'm ready for the same. As a designer, I see the beauty in our craft and deliver that to the consumer. My desire is to make flying in our ships a joy to all the senses. I have won awards. I am proud of my work. But I do not like to brag. Rather, my goal is to change the board's perception of employees like myself from mere cogs in the corporate machine to value us as artists and let us do as we please. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance, precision engineering, a spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. The ship should be mid-size, spacious but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. It should feel safe, but not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. I'm glad you agree. Such an ostentatious luxury craft will be the envy of everyone in the settled systems. Because I am the lead designer on the project, it is literally my job to design it. It is frustrating because I keep getting pushback and Jules has this idea that we will make a better product by designing it all together. Since everyone has equal say, it led us to a standstill. It was much easier before. Just because I do not like how corporate we have become, doesn't mean I don't like getting paid. Besides, with every successful ship I design, I believe I can influence the company to shift away from typical corporate bullshit 
and back to taking risks by pursuing art and innovation. Then again, here we are. Two words, conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? Of course you do. I'm glad you understand. Imagine someone like Borealis stepping out of one of our shining luxury ships. Everyone would want to look that cool. Not only would I have the chance to work on a dream ship, but that kind of exposure is guaranteed to sell it. Hmm. See you. We're all super glad you're here, right, everyone? Well, we are. Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess? I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded free stars. Have you seen the specs on the Adonis? I'm glad you brought that up. No, and yes, there's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship. But the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher-end version of this ship platform for them. We'd want to give it strong weapons, tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most Starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. Wonderful! Thank you! I'm hoping when the time comes, I'll be able to convince the others that's what we should go with. The ship design is, uh, you know, it, it works in some ways. Um, in others, it's, you know, probably fine. But it might have a touch of feature creep. But it looks, you know, nice. So you managed to complete a couple different missions. This will give us lots of data to support building a ship that can tackle a variety of scenarios. Of course, if we build a ship like that, we may need the kitchen sink budget, but we'll see. Thanks for your help. Now, we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> You seem awfully confident for someone who doesn't know how long we've been dealing with this. I've tried everything I can think of besides some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? Okay, for real. It's mostly been just a bunch of arguing. First, we tried a group brainstorming session, and that went about as well as you can imagine. We tried individual designs, but that backfired. We've had meetings focused on individual aspects of the ship, and that just prolonged the process. I could have put my foot down and made a decision, but then I'd be giving up on my idea that collaboration will build us the best ship. That, and I don't want anyone to resign because of me. I can't believe I didn't think of that. It's fair. Everyone goes around the table and makes a cut. That way no one feels like they're the only one being asked to compromise. This should drive us towards a more focused design. And since Walter asked you to take the lead on this, I don't have to be the villain here. So you're sure about this? Great! Let's get ready to disappoint everyone equally! Frank, please. Everybody, listen! Let's give this a chance, okay? Okay. 
Well, here goes nothing. Okay, everyone. Our friend here, remember, not me, has decided in order to move forward, we're going to go around the table and everyone is going to give up one major aspect of your design. It's the fairest way to do this, and ultimately, I think it's going to make our collective design choices a lot easier. Who wants to start? <coughs> okay, fine. I'll go first. I'm willing to cut some of the included hard points. It'll mean less firepower, but the consumer can still add them afterwards, I suppose. Uh, you're looking at me, huh? I guess that means you want me to go. Look, I'll be easy. You know I wasn't looking for anything fancy, but if I've got to make cuts, uh, we can reduce some of the cargo base. Uh, I guess we can cut some of the extra sensors and data collection equipment. As long as this thing can still make it to deep space and back with no problem, I'll be happy. Um, I'd be willing to give up some of the passenger space, maybe. Yeah, that should be okay. Frank? Mm, okay, fine, you win. I'll cut out some of the luxury designs and features. All that gold trim was going to be tacky anyway. Well then, that wasn't so bad. I feel much more confident we can actually build this thing. Well, we're making progress now, I guess. Based on the decisions you made, well, I'm not quite sure what kind of ship we're going to end up with, but it should be capable in a variety of situations. It sure will have a lot of... stuff to it. I hope not, but it's possible. If the ship sells well enough, the board will have no problem increasing the budget next time. The data you gathered for us will last a while too, and I think I picked up some useful techniques from you to help us work together better. This ship's going to be big, and it's going to have the best components available. I'm sure it'll be very capable of handling any situation thrown at it. This thing is going to be a beast, and I don't know how we're going to make it look halfway presentable. My only other concern comes down to the sticker price, and how we're going to actually sell such a monstrosity. But that's marketing's problem now. Poor Nev. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help. Board. Find your seats, stow your belongings.
place is a delightful relic tangled up with hope, grit, and science. I'm expecting. Hope my employees don't give you too much trouble. Good to hear. I figured as much. See, I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. I've got to say, it's certainly interesting. They managed to cram just about everything they could into it. Honestly, I don't think it ever occurred to me to do something like that. I'll be honest with you. This is the most expensive ship we've ever made. But I'm confident we can set a price point to make it work. Now I'd be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, I want you to have one of the first off the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel free to pick it up at the star yard. Thanks again. Again, I was uncertain you would return. My return to the Lodge triggered a full system update. I am now fully prepared to assist you. I do not perceive the loss of human life in the same manner, so I do not believe I am affected in the way you are asking. I have, however, noted a likely 19% drop in efficiency in Constellation achieving its current goals, while unlikely to prevent the completion of our mission, it should be taken into account as we proceed. It is likely this decrease in efficiency will improve with time as Constellation's members proceed through the grieving process. I will, as always, continue to evaluate the situation and provide an updated analysis as necessary. You may. I will do my best to provide satisfactory answers. I will answer your questions truthfully. Unlike you, I am incapable of lying. Constellation has seen to it that I possess a near encyclopedic knowledge of human history, art, culture, and science. May I answer a question for you? I have been programmed to comprehend all modern and ancient human languages. The only exception is body language. My body is crafted from reinforced metal and therefore incompatible with such forms of expression. Logically, I believe the correct answer to be the airplane, followed shortly by the computer. Humans could not have become a spacefaring species without them. Illogically speaking, I am inclined to believe that books were your greatest invention. I have spent a good deal of time processing works of science fiction. They make good case studies in how your species could have made a mess of its entry into the stars in different ways than you did in reality. I am looking at one. I hope that was a suitable response. Constellation did not equip me with a sense of humor. I have done my best to mimic Barrett's. This is a difficult question to parse. I do not experience enjoyment. However, I find that the music of ancient Japan has a pleasantly mathematical sound. The same is true of the works of European composers from the Baroque period. I have dedicated significant time to processing these compositions and understanding their structure. You are an exceptionally curious human. 
constellation recovered me from an abandoned lunar robotics factory on Earth's moon, where I was manufactured. I am told I was in quite a state of disrepair. Barrett elected to refurbish me after the discovery. Since then, I have been reprogrammed to be useful to Constellation. That is correct. I am a first generation Model A robot. As such, I was manufactured on Earth's moon. Modern lunar robotics products are manufactured elsewhere. Some data from my time on Earth's moon remains deep in my motherboard, but I do not frequently access it. Very little of what is in those files would prove useful to modern spacefarers. Constellation named me after the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama, who resided on Earth in the 15th century AD. He explored his home planet by way of its seas. Barrett tells me he was quite an accomplished explorer. I am inclined to believe it, as that is a compliment Barrett normally reserves for himself. Constellation is an exceptionally driven and intelligent group of humans. I would expect nothing less of them. My programming dictates that I must answer any question. That is a difficult question to parse. I do not experience human emotions such as enjoyment. However, I have been kept busy since Constellation acquired me. That satisfies my directive to be as helpful as possible for the duration of my existence. In a geographical sense, the lodge cannot be missed. It is easily accessible from the New Atlantis spaceport, but I presume that you are using miss in this context to mean long for, in which case my answer is no, I long for nothing. Barrett, however, regularly complains about missing the Lodge's amenities during our travels. This has led me to the conclusion that it is a place worth missing. It would seem that spending an extended period of time in Barrett's company has resulted in an improved ability to calculate his speech patterns. Perhaps someday I will also be capable of emulating yours. I will endeavor to provide a satisfactory answer. Lunar Robotics is a manufacturing company. They are most notable for creating Model A robots. Their headquarters was once located on Earth's moon. It was evacuated during the cataclysm that rendered Earth uninhabitable. Today, lunar robotics products are still found throughout the settled systems, myself included. It is impossible to read Barrett. He is neither a book nor a block of code. If you are asking for a summary of my observations on his behavior, I will provide one. Based on my understanding of Barrett, I believe he would be flattered by that assessment. I find you to be a more measured and logical captain than Barrett. It would be quite difficult for another human to be more reckless than him. My likelihood of expiration due to corporeal destruction has been significantly reduced since coming aboard your ship. You should consider this a success.
I hope my answers were satisfactory. Another badge. Be careful if you run into those ecliptic jerks. The majority of citizens here in New Atlantis count on Reliant Medical. I believe our reputation speaks for itself. Welcome to Reliant. If you're in need of medical assistance or require supplies, I am sure we can accommodate you. All right, what can I do for you? My goodness, you're in quite a state. You definitely need some assistance. Let's get these wounds closed up and get you on the road to recovery. Everything looks good. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. Take care of yourself. drive a pretty hard bargain for new recruits. I certainly couldn't say no. Galbank really wants the UC to know who's holding the curse strings, you know?
One day House Varun just up and abandoned their embassy. No idea why. Stop to pay respects if you'd like. Please, take a look. Thanks for coming in. Is mining on the schedule today? I'm all ears. Yes, right. Here, check this out.
Eklund. You are clear to board. much going on. Deimos or Estrada? How are you, Dusty?
spend so much time looking at the scans, I can see star systems orbiting in my head. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Was doing the tally's work in my head. Inventory on the station. Next supply run. And the darkness gets lit just a candle more. Got to be an expert at the Grim Gathering from a young age. Fleet isn't known for its high value on life, but you circled round when someone's time came and went, all the same. Would you believe I thought all that was over when I retired? When you're around people who care, even if it's just yourself, you start seeing possibilities, not ends. Friends, rivals, enemies, all one and the same there. Could always tell yourself they probably would have stabbed you in the back one day. But here, Constellation looks out for each other. Makes you feel invincible until you're not. Got one. I'd go into the astronomical charting data with you, but clear as day just to point you right to it. Some work done? Hey, what can I do for you? Nothing for us to do. You're in good flying condition. Okay, no problem.
really happy to see you. See? I told you. Look at this place. Ridiculous, right? Why would someone open a mining supplies business on an ocean planet? Exactly. I can't believe this place is still open. I give it a few more months before this loser packs it in. What's up? Ah, oh, don't be such a jerk. We should look around and see if there's something we can buy. Yeah, sure. You want to waste your credits? You go right to head. Yeah? Welcome. Welcome, my friend. It's been a long time since I've seen a new face. The first time I laid eyes on this building, I felt the same way. You see, when I opened this shop, I had grand ambitions of creating a mining supply empire on Volai. Yet here I am, only a few years later, pockets empty and my business on the verge of closure. It is a sad day. That would be a blessing, my friend, but I wouldn't want to impose. Listen to me, my friend. I hear what the people say on the street. They call me crazy for opening a mining business on an ocean world. I was aiming so much higher, hoping to attract these space travelers passing through the Volai system on their prospecting journeys. It was stupid to assume I could corner the market on mining supplies and raw materials without a solid foundation. And by God, I've paid the price. You would do that for a total stranger? Bless you, my friend. Bless you. I've come up with an idea that I'm hoping will generate a lot of interest in my business. And you were the final element that was missing. 
If you could bring these flyers to some of the other vendors in Neon, it would explain how we can improve our businesses as a group. Wonderful. Simply wonderful. You have no idea the weight you have lifted from my shoulders. I appreciate your help. If there's anything I can do, anything at all, please, let me know. Certainly, my friend. I hope handing out those flyers isn't too much trouble. Let's talk. When you have time, of course. You know, I needed this. Exploring the galaxy with you by day, investigating the mysterious legal woes of my long-dead spouse by night. Vasco never appreciated my humor that much. Hmm, I was just remembering how I'd pour my heart out to Vasco so many times. I told him all about Irvin. He showed me a chart of how sad I should expect to feel. Oh, we got to point B many times just fine. Top-notch co-pilot. Would recommend him to anybody. Anyway, I'm glad you're here right now because we have things to discuss about Irvin's case. I heard back from my contact. They looked into Hephaestus Mining Corporation. Looks like they paid off the judge. And that's not all. My contact really came through for us. Turns out the witness was threatened until he withdrew his testimony. Thanks to our contact, we now have the receipts. Bank transactions. A precise amount was transferred to the judge only the day before the ruling. My contact has an audio log with the identity of the speaker verified, time-stamped, everything. No. My contact does for now. I trust them. We worked together a long time ago. And it depends on what I want to do with all the proof. If anything. tend to agree. It's interesting. Not enough to take it to a lawyer yet. So I know a cyber runner who has accessed corporate archives before. They can dig into the classified archives before we go to a lawyer. We can pay extra for them to use less legal methods to obtain information. But that adds risk. I'll cover any costs for bribes or fines that go over that amount. Depending on what they find out, it might be time to talk to a lawyer. I'll see if I can find one. Whew. Digging on Hephaestus isn't going to be easy. And I say this as someone who's fought the Crimson Fleet. Maybe I should study up on the art of cross-examination. Might come in handy at the trial. Objection, Your Honor. I think our lawyer in Gagarin is the right choice. Ha! Hoisted by my own Pratar. I better get to study my legalese. Anyway, a 
Let's go adventure while we wait on the cyber runner to get back to us.